<laughs> hey guys, I'm Ethan. And I'm Georgia. And yeah, we're related. You know, growing up these days as iPad babies, mm. you know, it's honestly like a good time to be growing up. Like they get so sucked in, at least they're passionate about something. I know, so, like most people you meet, they're like, what do you do? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like I, don't do, like, I don't have a hobby. It's like, at least they've got the iPad and they love it. I've got <laughs> one. I just can't get into it like they can. But so, you know, we weren't iPad babies. We, unfortunately, we missed out on that. We were TV babies. We watched a lot of TV growing up. We played outside as well, you know, like we played outside. But the thing about outside is like it bites back. Like TV didn't break my arm seven times. No, it did not. And yeah, so I feel like because we grew up so TV and movie conscious, like, I mean, our parents didn't want a parent. Fair enough. iPad babies, 6 p.m. animation on Till night Fire off the Simpsons, you're Come laughing. Come on. Oh, Neighbours is on, bruh, change the channel. <laughs> so we have a shared love of movies and TV, and because of that, the people were demanding a channel. They were demanding it, calling, phones going off the hook. Yeah. And <laughs> we wanted to bring sort of a review or a watching channel, some shared, some things that we've both seen, and some individual. And to start off, because Ethan's the youngest child, you know. I get what I want. <laughs> so true. I get what I want. <laughs> like a man yelling, I get what I want in 2023. Yikes. <laughs> I get what I want. Um, he decided that he gets to go first and force me to watch something, I guess. Yeah, so. So what are we watching? What we're watching, it's a big, it's a cultural hit. It's had a huge impact. I assume, I haven't done much research, but I assume it's impacted <laughs> TV and stuff because it's big, everyone talks about it. I'm sure you've heard about it, or well, obviously you've heard about it, but the fact you haven't seen it, it's embarrassing, it's a huge flop. What I'm bringing is uh, Sex in the City. Um, yeah, it is a bit of a flop, I haven't seen it. HBO canon, really, as well, and I'm a HBO girl. You know, I was busy in high school watching, consistently talking about cancelling, CW shows such as Make It or Break It, Gymnastics Call, The Lion Game. I also spent a lot of time doing that. Project Free TV. Love ya. You know, I haven't seen it, um, but I do know a bit about it. I am a young woman after all. I have been to a bar. I have ordered a cocktail, so people have brought up Sex in the City to me. And the girlies, you know, we go around, it's a bit of a BuzzFeed quiz question, you know, the, the real life BuzzFeed question that's still going, it's like Hogwarts and like Sex in the City character, like those two have staying power offline. Yeah, I think it's like for the millennials, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Age me. Um, but yeah, I've been told I'm a carry. Thanks for asking. Yeah, that's like, it very insulting, I'd say. <laughs> Well, I hope it wasn't your friends that said that. Um, just like my best friend. Yeah, she was, I think, maybe kind of subtly trying to tell you you're a shit friend. Okay, so ex-best friend? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Fuck, better call her. <laughs> what did you say to me? I'm a carry. <laughs> Hang up. That's a carry move. <laughs> <sighs> um, yeah, so I've been told I'm a carry. Who have you been told you are? Nobody's told me I'm any of them. So rude. Um, no, well, uh, to be fair, nobody's asked. I don't think it's much of a, a younger people's question. <laughs> Literally nobody's asked me. I hate that you're putting yourself as a younger person. Like, what am I? Chop liver? 30. <laughs> Pushing 30. Um, <laughs> Literally people will think I'm 30. Apologies to our 30-year-old viewers. <laughs> what viewers? You're old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but the only people who have ever asked me who I am is if it's a top, like if it's been brought up okay, like so sex in the city. I don't I'm know. Asking. I, <laughs> I'm literally I'm trying to, you. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> so hard trying to drown you out right now. Um, honestly, like it's a bad answer, but I like to think I've got aspects of all of them. But like aspirationally, don't we all want to be Samantha? Like she, she fucks. <laughs> she's charming. She's funny. But like realistically, like, like there's Pop no your me, you'll see next to your brother. She fucks. <laughs> <laughs> My brother's got three dreams. <laughs> yeah, but realistically, it's like I'm not having sex. <laughs> I'm not that charming. I'm not as funny as her. She drops fucking bombshell liners at the show. So, and yeah, I'm not Carrie because she's an asshole. And like, at least I like to think that I'm not like that. <laughs> Although, don't someone's got to be the main character, Ethan. God, someone's got to serve. And yeah, honestly, I don't see much much of Miranda in me. Um, and Charlotte, she's like, 
she's cool, but she's just a big prude. It's like, I don't have much sex, but I have had it before. And if someone brings it up, I'm not like, can you stop talking about that? So let's just go watch the pilot. Let's see what you think. Let's go watch it. Okay, let's go. I think the camera angle's off. No. Nah. No, nah, can't be. Okay, well, that was definitely something. Quite the pilot. I will say that. Ambitious. I, it was an ambitious pilot. It did a lot. It did the most. All I can say is that before Fleabag, there was sex in the city. There was Carrie breaking the fourth wall like every two seconds. Like, she was demolishing it. <laughs> she got a hammer. Um, yeah, I found that a bit jarring. They really did not trust the viewer at all. Not only was there fourth wall breaking, there was narration. It is like funny in the part with so much of that fourth wall break and we watched spoilers a few extra episodes and it sticks out throughout season one, but it's just, they completely drop it. Like it just becomes the narration, which is plenty. Like you get it. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> but before we get into a quick um, view of all our themes and what I'm thinking, what you're thinking, how I feeling really post season one, episode one, accurately titled pilot, bring back the pilot. We're just gonna do a quick recap of the episode. The major premise is that Carrie is come to the realization that love is dead in New York and in Manhattan. So what's she gonna dead. do? She's gonna fuck like a man. She's gonna be completely emotionally unattached. Her words, not mine. So after the intro sequence, we jump straight into the classic Carrie narration, which I liked, I yeah. loved. And, but I just think the sequence went a little long. Essentially like Carrie takes us on this journey through like a woman who's trying to find love and she's come from London apparently. Like, sorry, I don't know what casting director was in charge. That woman is not from London and there's no way she's set foot in an art gallery. She is from Bendigo, Australia. Doubtful. I mean, just moved here from London. London? Really? Usually, it's like they hire a non-Australian actor to do an Australian accent. It's like the worst accent you ever heard. And you just think, just hire an Australian. This time, they prepared for that. We're like, we're going to go one step further. We're going to hire an Australian to do a British accent and they're not going to pull it off at all. <laughs> not at all. It's literally so, it's the opposite of posh. It's like trying to give like posh art gallery, like viewer. Like not that we've ever been to an art gallery. Like I would never go. Yeah. Never. Like, nah, not for me. This is the only medium for me. Yeah. That's that, their whole meet cute in this story is, yeah, yeah. they made in an art gallery. It's like, can you imagine a worse first date? Like you're at yeah. the art gallery, like pretending that you get it. Get me to the gift shop, fucking ASAP. <laughs> I mean, also this is no way this woman from Bendigo has been. Like she's like, she would eat a meat pie, not caviar. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the accent is jarring. Like I don't understand her in this setting. Like, sorry, it's taking me out of the world. Yeah. But like, I think Carrie is like literally like, I mean, I guess not Carrie, but you know, I blame her for everything. She's the main character. It's like documentary style. Like, what is this, David Attenborough? Like, the whole first part, there's lots of random, like, interviews. It's like, a, it's giving, like, TikTok on the street. No, yeah, it's not. Like, that's a, an insult to Sir David. <laughs> it's like, you watch it, and it's like, yeah, they're doing these street interviews, and then the person goes back to reading the newspaper. It's like, it's something from, like, a YouTube documentary that's got, like, 20 views. Probably, like, this video. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's even worse than like a YouTube video or things. Like it's literally TikTok street interviews. It's giving like I did a random favor for someone. Like it's so bad. Like the editing is shocking in this part of the pilot. Like that's all I can say. There are some like funny moments which I did love. Like yeah. it's very like you know she was giving poignancy with these opinions, but I do just think the editing like really took me out of it. But there were some iconic moments. Like I think my favorite is like they're like you know she's she's going she's gorilla she's underground she's like in the gym interviewing men but like is it her like you don't know who's doing these interviews they're just speaking to the barrel of the camera much like this um, and there's this guy talking about sex because they have it in the city he talks about the mid-30s pamphlet which i personally never heard about and like it's giving misogyny but i do love anything with like a fun like saying like it's giving situation shit mid-30s pamphlet like i love a name to a phenomenon Okay, the documentary style is wrapped up. What are we doing now? Boom, cut to the four main girls at dinner. You know, they're eating a bit of cake, they're chatting, they're shooting the shit. As they should. <laughs> they go, is that unmarried, single, unlikable, obviously. <laughs> they're really just rubbing in how like divorced and single and 30 they are. Like they're celebrating a birthday and you can't have an unmarried woman in a scene not eating ice cream or cake. That's, that's canon in the culture. We do know that. And I think I liked this scene because it does really introduce us to all the characters, which is fun. I do think it's like iconic that only Samantha gets like some title head freeze frame, yeah. which is fine. This is Samantha. You don't need to worry about these other two. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is like, okay. And honestly, that's kind of how I feel by the end of the scene. Like Samantha's like, I'm out here, I'm a successful hot businesswoman and I can have sex. 
And like every time sex is like mentioned, like Charlotte is like gagging. It's like she's she's never gagged because she's gagging at the thought, you know? It's like, okay, Charlotte, chill. <laughs> <laughs> like I just started trying my best. Yeah, so Miranda and Samantha are talking about how they're out here fucking like men, you know, no feelings. <laughs> and then cut to Carrie and, and Charlotte. Hey. The haters, yeah, they're fucking haters. Wow. They're like, oh, it's all bullshit. Like, what, you don't believe in love? And then Carrie's like, yeah, that's bullshit. Like, just wait till you find the right man. And then Samantha hits her with the, the right man's just an illusion, honey. Like, just start living your fucking life. Like, boom. Boom. Good advice. And I also just feel like, babe, they're not mutually exclusive. Like, this scene is so annoying. It's like, you can't have sex if you want to find love. It's like, sorry. Yeah. I think they go together, sis. <laughs> so then, the next major scene, we're cutting to Carrie, she's out at brunch, maybe lunch, not really established what time it is. With but her. there's two wines on the table, that's <laughs> all I know. I'm like, okay, New York. <laughs> so it cuts to Carrie, she's with her, her best friend, oh, which yeah. she introduces Stanford, um, her, yeah, her gay best friend. Um, but I do feel like it's a fun shot, like I do like the introduction of this character, it's done well. I feel like it's funny, the freeze frame in this moment. And I think it's the first time, to be honest, it's done well. Uh, Stanford has that really funny line where he says, Oh like, my God, I sorry. Feel... Sorry, okay, the best thing ever. Sorry, sorry, it's giving clear. <laughs> it's giving yes vote. It's giving marriage equality. Stanford's like, oh, I just feel like the only place that that like, you can find, find love, love in New York is in the gay community. It's straight love that's closeted now. <laughs> A man enters, okay? And Stanford is like, do not turn around, Carrie. They do not look. The love of your life just walked in. So obviously, as the viewer, I'm like, well, look, sis. I need to see who it is. Anyway, so Carrie's obviously like turns around. She comes back. She's like, oh. And then she's like telling us she made a mistake with him at 26, 29, and like 32. Yeah. And I'm like, babe, we've all been there, doll. And yeah, he looks pretty hot from afar. I'll he say is that. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> he's very, he's quite stunning. I, yeah, I can see why she made the mistake. <laughs> And then Stanford's like, obviously do not go over there. Like he's a pleading bestie yeah. at this case. So yeah. he's like, do not do this. And Carrie is so, Carrie's all of us actually, I'll be honest. Like I, she is main character in this moment because she really is all of us. She's relatable. She's like, what am I, a masochist? Like I'm not going over there. I'm not speaking to yeah. him. But then, you know, she has to, well, she's not just a masochist, she's a scientist. So she goes to run a little social experiment <laughs> on the guy to approach him. So she goes over there. <laughs> And then cut to... She is going to make that mistake again. That she's chatting with him. And then, then there's these shots of Stanford being like, like... Oh, no. He's all of us. They're yeah. both all of us. Yeah, We've been on both sides of the fence. So, like, your friend's giving you advice and you just ignore it. Like, I'm going for it. Fuck it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, first you say yes and then yeah. you ignore them. Yeah. That's all of us. And then she goes over there. She sees her man and, like, look, it's a little, it's a little toxic. Because he hits her with a hey babe and kisses her on the cheek and look. Such a bold opening move for something that's obviously fizzled out. You go for the fucking kiss cheek. But got to say like... so high. Yeah, that's confidence. <laughs> swooned. I swooned. Um, so I was into it. And then, yeah, Carrie's really like... She laid down the law for her social experiment. She's like, I'm going to have sex like a man. And she's straight up and bites him back. But not a conversation, if that's what you were thinking. So Carrie's run her little social experiment. She bangs, she leaves. She's walking on the, she's walking on the, the you know, the sidewalk. Come like on, she, hold her hand through it, Ethan. Jesus, she bangs, she leaves. It's like she owns the place, you know? She's like, she's on top of the world. I just had sex at 3 p.m. And then, boom, shoulder check, drops her purse. Stuff goes everywhere. <laughs> By stuff, we pretty much mean condoms and lipstick are scattered on the floor. And I mean, two essentials. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a what's in my bag video. <laughs> GQ, hit me up. And then, who, who saunters over to help her pick up her stuff? This is the introduction of the big love of the show, Big. Talk about a meet cute. He's helping her pick up her condoms. We get this really funny narration where she's really specific. She's like, my Trojan, like extra spicy fucking big dick condoms. <laughs> But yeah, I do think this is like such a fun thing. I watched this as a first time viewer. I was like, okay, so like Big is in the movies. And as discussed, I've seen the movies. Like I know he's the love of her life. And it's just like in a meet cute and like, I don't know, like love actually and everything else. It's like this like really wholesome moment. It's like, she's just fucked <laughs> someone else. She like walks out. She's like, literally she says nothing. Also the editing, sorry. She says nothing can get in my way. And then someone literally <laughs> gets in Shoulder her way. <laughs> 
and she drops her whole bag. I'm like, oh my God. Talk about dropping the bag, dropping the ball. Like it's such a funny scene. It's such a good meet cute. Like I actually think now I'm, we're rom-com viewers. I think this might be my favorite meet cute. Like it's so silly. It's unforgettable, isn't it? Because that's the thing. It's like lots of these meet cutes. It's like, oh, I met them at the super. It's like, I've had millions of conversations with people at the supermarket instantly forgotten. <laughs> well, you but went to college. <laughs> if, I, if I get shoulder <laughs> checked, millions. if I get shoulder checked, I've dropped my condoms everywhere. Someone comes over and helps me pick them up, comments on them and fucks off. I'm like, holy shit. What's your number? <laughs> we just had the meet cute. Now we're cutting to another another cafe scene. We're really getting introduced to you know all the characters in this episode. And we're meeting forgettable guy, um, <laughs> so Skipper. True. I think his name is. So they're at the cafe or whatever, and he has to. He's like, I've got to confess something to you. A huge intimate secret, if you will. It's been a year, Carrie. Really? It's like. Come on, like TV shows and movies make it seem like if you're not having sex every week, like there's something completely wrong with you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, fully. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, it's like, oh, like, you know, if a friend told me they hadn't had sex in a year, it's like, oh, whatever. Well, it's like, oh no, capital L loser. Yeah, it's like, bruh, like, and you think we're going to be hanging out. You haven't <laughs> fucked any, boom, like, dude, we're not on the same level. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like check my little roster. For friendship and you're off. Yeah. Babe, wait, wait, you didn't fuck last week? Sorry. But this is like, that is seriously how characters act in these no, shows. They're like so shocked when their friend says that. I'm going through a huge dry patch. Like I haven't had sex in six months. It's like, dude, who cares? Like, like, literally I literally didn't ask. I literally didn't ask. Like, <laughs> they never ask either in these shows. It's crazy. Like, yeah. They just bring it up and it's like, oh, like, why did you make dinner weird? Like, I didn't ask about your sex life. I, <laughs> I, I, like, I asked about like, how your family's doing. Like, I care about you. Then he starts talking about how his problem is he's too nice. It's like, oh, that's, it's like. Well, that's always the issue for men. Men, so, they're so nice. Like, honestly, like, women are always out being like, men are too nice to us. I'm honestly, me and my friends, when we get together, we're like, ah, oh, the guys out here are so kind. <laughs> and then, Carrie mentions the word pussy. <laughs> This guy is cringing at like, at somebody saying pussy. It's like, that is, that is like, when we saw it, I was like, oh my God, like what, who, who the fuck is this guy? It's like, bro, you're too, you're so nice at the word pussy. Just like, eee. <laughs> oh, he knows women. <laughs> <laughs> He knows how to get women in the bed. I just Don't can't, I just can't up. degrade women like that. I hear the word pussy. Eee. <laughs> so. We just see, we just see Carrie introduce Skipper as a capital L loser. And she's like, bestie alert. I know someone who you could hang out with. And it's Miranda. Like, okay, okay, friend. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they, they're at the nightclub chaos. They're all at it. It's giving, we've got Carrie there, we've got Samantha there, and we've got Miranda there. Miranda's at the bar. She's with Skippy, Skipper. And she... Serial something. I think let's just... Honestly, we'll just play the clip here. Are you saying that I'm not pretty enough? No, 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 of course you are. So, ipso facto, I can't be interesting? Women either fall into one of two categories, beautiful and boring, or homely and interesting. Is that what you're saying, Skipper? He literally cannot compute, like, both women existing. There is, like, a funny moment where he's just like, um, if you're not in the beauty Olympics, you could be interesting. Yeah. It's like, uh, why? Yeah. Wait, are you trying to, like, flirt with me by calling me ugly? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're wrapping up at the club, night's coming to a close, Carrie's outside, she's, she's trying to get a cab, they're all going Whoa, 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 reel back to the viewer for a second, Ethan. We did forget to say that Big was in the club. That's true, yeah. Sorry. Big's in the club. <laughs> Big's Big in the club. is in the club! <laughs> Big. Big is in the building! <laughs> Throw your motherfucking heads! <laughs> So Big's in the building. There's a little mysterious wave between Big and Carrie. That's yeah. all we get from them in the club. Nothing else. There's no flirty banter happening. Yeah. And Carrie, she's leaving the club. She's done for the night. She's she's narrating. She's reflecting. Who pulls up Big in his private driven car. Keep in mind, they haven't even had a single conversation at this point. They had the meet cute, bumping on the condoms. And, you know, he made some sort of offhand comment. And he goes... And a little wave. And he goes... Well, what are you doing? Get in. And she just gets in. It's like, are you trying to get traffic? Like, you don't know this man at all. But okay, she gets in. Hey, well, he's a rich. And every single line he delivers is kind of oozing and charisma. Like, who is this guy? Like, okay, I'm going to get in. <laughs> Seriously, I feel like 
it's so much that even their first interaction, like the chemistry, like talk about the casting directors, like this pilot is made by the chemistry of these two actors. Like it's mm. amazing. So she gets in the car and it's like, just so, he's like, what do you do for work? Yeah. So what have you been doing lately? I mean, what do you do for work? <laughs> it's like, why is You this? fucking idiot. <laughs> that was obviously what I meant by that. And then, you know, she's, she's talking about the plot because we as the viewer and you as our viewer still don't know the plot. She's like, well, I've been researching how to have sex like a man. He's like, you're, <laughs> you're not like that, surely. She's like, well, how would you know? And then he goes, surely you are. And he's like, here's another great line, like, not a drop, not a single drop. No, not even oh, half no, oh, a drop. Not even half a drop. And she, you know, she's surprised or whatever. And then he starts laughing to himself. He's just, he's just gotten it. And then he goes, I get it. <laughs> You've never been in love before. Boom! Like, somebody says that to you. That is such like a bombshell. Someone you don't even know is like, they've got you analyzed. They're like, you've never been in love before. You're rethinking everything. It's like, maybe I have never been in love. How does this guy know? Is it written on my face? Capital L? <laughs> it's like, also, I feel like when this line is delivered, like in a teen rom com, it's like, it's not so powerful because it's like, yeah, I'm 16. Yeah. Like when the jock says, like, okay, well, you've never been in love, it's like, have you? Like with your 12 year old girlfriend? No. But like these actors, like in this, th like, it's like she's like 33 or something. Yeah. Like he's like 40. It's like, oh, hey, babe, none of you are you unmarried? <laughs> You've never been in love. Where do you like, make a fucking grown man cry? Like, if you ever want to upset set someone, just say that to them. They're going to fucking rethink everything. She gets dropped off. She's like reeling. Oh my she's, God. She's reeling. She's yeah, like, oh my God. You know, she's Have rethinking, you rethinking everything. So then she goes, you know, he's a car's about to drive off. She goes, she's like, wait, wait, I got to know. Knocks on the window. Have you ever been in love? He just hits that. Abs are fucking lootly. <laughs> Window winds up, drive off, freeze frame, end of the episode. The free the freeze frame is so good. Abs are fucking lootly. Yeah. Freeze frame. Yeah. Come on. It's such a good ending. Come on. I honestly directors in Hollywood right now need that. Yeah. They're doing too much of these Netflix moments. Like freeze frame more. Yeah. For Give me sure. a freeze frame. Yeah. I wanna sit in the moment. And so that's the plot. Those are the highlights. <laughs> we've seen it, we've absorbed it. Mm-hmm. Time to revisit the age-old question. Who are you? I would say I'm probably Carrie because I'm insufferable. <laughs> Never stop narrating. And I'm a little bit romantic, yeah. I'm a bit of a, bit of a romantic. Well, so yeah, what do, you, what, what do you think? Do you think, do you think I'm Carrie? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've spent more time with you since we filmed the first bit. And it's like, oh my God, like, can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> You're at work getting pinged. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, leave me alone. I'm at the office. <laughs> so we've seen it. We loved it. We commented on it. Did that, we love it? No, we loved we it. We loved it. We immediately were like, we were watching it like, oh, let's take, like we were planning, we watched the episode, we're like, we'll take notes, you know, know what we're going to say. We're like, fuck that, let's put on episode two. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Well, we loved it. Um, we hope you watch it. And I think that's it. There's only one thing left to do. Oh, no, we've got to do it again. And there's only one thing left to do. Look at my elbow, I'll tell you, get a good dab up. And there's, only, and there's only one thing left to do. Oh my God, you suck at this. And there's only one thing left to do. Bro, you can't dab for shit. You need to go less hard. Okay, okay. You're but way too strong. You're you, need to, you need to put more power in I'm, I'm putting you. Okay. I'm just not you. There's only one thing left to do.